Good morning to you viewers, it's the Colonel speaking to you live from the Grange for British Imperial YouTube Broadcasting and today another one of my stories. This one is Scenes from the Gramophone Fair 2011. Here we go. Imagine if you will the Gramophone Fair 2011. Over there is the leading dealer mucking about with his dancing darkies and actually reenacting them with his mysterious oriental companion. The Mr. Shake Hands Man of the gramophone world and the mysterious face of the East. And over there is the venerable old Irish gentleman trotting out the usual old blarney. Ah, yes, sir, I paid £1,700 for that ten years ago at Christie's, and here's the proof! As he waves an annotated catalogue aloft and says, Ah, to be sure, now I'm only asking the thousand pounds. Tis a bargain, so it is. We walk on, viewers, and on the walls we notice posters. Wanted, dead or alive, one pound reward, the Colonel, if reported to the Gramophone Club. Postcards only, written in large letters, under one of which stands the dignified figure of a heavily bearded rabbi with thick specks. Past the stand of the West Country Pisky, with his wearing his West Country hat and comedy accent, and actually having one of the best stands of the day, which isn't saying much. Then wander past the radio junk and massed ranks of Bakelite telephones to the stall of a familiar, cringing, hump-backed figure. Yes, the empty seat behind his stall, uh, saved as a memorial to his saintly late wife. Yes, indeed, viewers, it's the fake crystal set maker standing forlornly beside a modest cabinet gramophone made of oak by some third-rate furniture company in 1920 with standard parts. The price? Well, it's written on the lid on a grubby label in crayon covering an auction number, £80. Then picture, if you will, a young couple. How did they get in? He, tall, dark-haired, yet with some white strands due to woe. So more salt than pepper, really. And she, a Nigella Lawson look-alike, with English muffin emblazoned across her chest. They head past the empty stand of the hobbits and, no and have a look at the notice on it with the single word, Repossessed and head towards the fake crystal set maker's cabinet machine with m mischief in mind. The fake crystal set maker spots her and thinks, or rather thinks, Bleeding out, my luck's changed! as the crotch of his grubby old brown cords twitches in anticipation. A lady, oh hello, I'm new to collecting. Can you tell me about this machine? as she lightly brushes the sla shabby sleeve of his cuffless shirt. A fake crystal set maker, blushing and the crotch quivering even more. Oh, right, well, like, it's, it's like this, you see. Well, you see, it's a graphogram, sort of. And, um, well, you well, you're like, well, well, you sort of wind it up, right, really, yeah. He mimes a winding action, as do the grubby chords. Lady. Oh, how darling, how does it work? Well, like, you see, it's like this, well, it's a bit sort of gummed up, well, you see, and, well, like, it needs a little attention. Like my trousers, he thinks. Oh, would that be hard to do, said the lady as she caresses his other arm. Well, like, no, well, my lady, yeah, well, not really. Casting a glance at the young man who had wandered off in embarrassment and thinking, I know him. I can't quite think from bloody where. I'd better not mention it. He might want his money back or something. Yeah, that's real. Right, yeah. Why is the motorboard two inches short, old chap? Ah, oh, well, like it's sort of shrunk. Like I thought you didn't know nothing about gramophones. Oh, um, how much could you do it for? As she flutters her long eyelashes. Ah, oh, well, about thirty quid. The quivering indicating he thinks I'm in here. Oh, I don't know, and she, she appears to be leaving, and strokes his hump for luck. Oh, well, I suppose I can, well, how about 15 quid if it helps, like? I, I've, the lady, having had enough fun for the moment, I'll think about it. Um, it might be a bit too much work. 
the fake crystal set slopes off to the loo to adjust himself. In the background, the old fogies and codgers of the gramophone society and the radio and other interest society admire the substantial heaps of unsold gramophone books recently written by a marathon soundbox look-alike and the bloke from the Benny Hill Show. The bloke from the Benny Hill Show brushes brisket crumbs from one unsold copy with his hand-knitted cardi sleeve. But, you ask, how does the Colonel know all this? Well, did no one see the respectable old rabbi, or was it a rabbit, in the corner reciting his prayers on a Sunday? Well, it was me in disguise, viewers. I even had a look at the new book on gramophones and noticed that the photographs were of very variable quality. Some of them were obviously professionally taken, whilst others appeared to be taken in someone's back garden with a box brownie. And there were actually pot plants in the back of one in the background of one photo. It's unbelievable, really. Fortunately, the Benny Hill show chap didn't even recognise me as he counted out his pennies before pushing off for a cup of tea. Thank you, viewers, and goodbye.